Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So this is the start of a new play session. I uh looks like we were going to moon orbit or something. But let's let's pop over quick to the mission control and see what we've got available for our contracts. Let's see, explore Kerbin. Rendezvous two vessels. Okay. Satellite in equatorial orbit of the moon, easy enough. Rescue science data from space around the moon. Easy enough. We can do these two simultaneously. And we need to rescue Frandis and Supont and science data from the surface of the moon. Okay. We are at our seven, our seven max contracts. The most efficient way we can do this, and I'm not sure we'll have enough fuel to do this all in one go... Now that I think about it, this is going to be a pretty tall order, but rescuing these three guys and rendezvousing in orbit over Kerbin will probably be the most efficient way to do this. So, because we definitely are going to have ourselves some fuel issues, we should be basing it on the Mark IV Heavy. However, let's see, if we're going to rescue three people... We have space in here for two. We would bring only one, so we would not be bringing Bill. Would we bring Jeb or Valentina? I don't think it really matters. Valentina has a bit more XP, but I don't think we're going to really get XP for this. So we're going to detach at the heat shield, and we are actually going to get rid of our science modules for this ship. We're going to pull off our parachutes and stick our experiment storage unit off of there. Parachute on there. And we're going to have dual drogue chutes here-ish. Although I think this is the hatch. Let's just stick them like up here. Yeah, this is the hatch, I'm pretty sure. So we'll stick them there. That'll be fine. I mean, maybe it isn't the hatch, but... Real quick, let's just attach here, and we'll check. We'll check where the hatch is on this thing. I'm not 100% certain. Okay. So, just EVA, Jib. Hatch is here. Okay. Well, if that's the hatch, then we can just go ahead and revert this back to vehicle assembly. And we can just... We'll be covering a window, but that'll be fine. Jeb doesn't need a window anyway. There we go. Drogue shoots there. We're going to re-detach these. We need a maximum crew capacity of four to pull this off. We have a crew capacity of two. So we're going to want... Let's see, where exactly are they? Structural? No. Utility? Yes. Mark 1 crew cabin. Crew capacity of 2. That's what we're looking for. So we'll have a crew cabin there, and then we'll just attach the rest of our Mark 4 Heavy down below. This will be significantly lighter than the standard Snedgus Mark 4. We are going to call this the Snedgus Mark 4A Rescuer, I guess. That'll work. Okay, go ahead and save this. Now, we do have a reaction wheel here, which is good. We do not have solar panels. So let's go ahead and slap on a few solar panels. We'll do dual symmetry here, just because I want to do this in a particular fashion. That's not the button I was looking for. There we go. We'll just do this, and this, and that should be enough power-ish. I mean, we could even do a third. Right about here. We do probably want to snap angles, though. Something like that. Whoa, now. Huh. 
But that's gonna cover the windows, isn't it? Yeah, this thing's asymmetrical. Look at that. I guess it's fine. We'll leave it like this. Both of the windows are forward-facing-ish. But yeah, that's completely fine. So, then I guess the next goal... Whoa, now. That's not what I wanted. There we go. The next goal would be to just check our staging. That looks fine. This parachute is interestingly located. Yeah, we need we need to actually just pull this guy down here and put these parachutes, these drogue chutes, right up there. Okay, that should be our staging ready to go. And now, we don't have much for battery life. Do we want a battery? What's our max electric charge? 50? I think we'll be fine. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a simulation launch here. We'll see if this flies well. If it does, we'll just continue it. If it doesn't, we'll revert it. Okay. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we need to revert it <laughs> back to the vehicle assembly because we did not include a couple of modules that we need. Well, not really need, but find desirable. Specifically, we did not include a KER computer. There we go. Or a mech jeb. Which I think I'll just stick over on this side to try to balance out the weight. I'm not sure if it actually weighs anything. 0 0.0001 tons. And you, 0 0.005 tons. So this thing weighs a lot more, but... We'll try to balance it out a little bit. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Same thing. Uh, simulation launch. If it goes horribly, this is the first iteration of this version of the rocket, so we'll just revert it. Hi, flight engineer. Nice of you to... Nice of you to completely reset on us. Okay. Um, we, we actually have a maneuver planner. We're not going to be using that, though. Just smart ASS and Delta V stats. There we go. Okay, kill rotation. Let's see how this works. Throttle on up, and launch. We're a bit heavier than I was anticipating. Our initial thrust to weight is a little on the low side, but our SLT is going up. So that's, that's fine. We should be able to get there. It's primarily because we're lifting this T-800 as our maneuver stage. But the T-800 plus the Terrier has a lot of Delta V in it. So hopefully we'll be able to rescue at least two of these with this launch. If not all three. Okay, we're going to start making our gravity turn here in... A little bit. Maybe like at 175-ish. Right about now, I think. This will be a decent time to start pitching over. Come on. It doesn't want to pitch. We're almost... Oh. We don't want to pitch too much. We're almost there. Excellent. Now we've got the pitch rolling. Too much. Too much. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Not quite that much yet. It naturally wants to pitch. So we just need to keep this under control. Detach our side boosters. Naturally wants to pitch even more now. Whoa now. Whoa now. Boy, that's, this is awfully pitchy. Okay. And I think we're good. We're going to switch over to SAS. Killrot is not doing what we want. <laughs> there we go. Okay. 
What is our apoapsis currently? About 40 kilometers. That's fine. We're, we're not going to pitch anymore quite yet. We're, our, our time to apoapsis is not hardly going up. So it is going up slightly, but not quite quickly enough. Our inclination is going to be a little awkward, but we'll probably need to change our inclination anyway. Now our apoapsis is going up pretty quickly, so we're going to chase our prograde marker a little bit. Okay, we're pretty good here. It's going up again, but very, very slowly. Okay, now it's going up a little bit faster. We'll pop straight down to the apoapsis, or rather to the prograde marker. I don't know why I said apoapsis there. Time to apoapsis is currently going down, which is intriguing. But that's fine. We will be at the horizon very, very soon. We just need to burn here momentarily. And then we're going to go to horizon velocity up in just a moment. Probably once we hit 40 seconds to apoapsis, or 70 kilometers of the actual height, whichever comes first. I think 40 seconds is going to come first, and it did. So we'll just bump over to the horizon using Mechjib. Heading of 91 degrees, that's actually not too bad. We'll just do a little bit of corrective steering here. Yeah, still, still down a bit. Time to apoapsis is going down, but kind of slowly. Heading is still at 91 degrees, so we still need to steer downwards slightly. There we go. Apoapsis is going back up. Excellent. And our periapsis is coming up quite quickly as well. This is a successful launch. We're about out of fuel for our first stage. There we go. And on goes our second stage. And we are pushing up quite quickly right now. We're just about in orbit. Let's, uh, let's wait till we're a little closer to our apoapsis. We are technically in orbit right now. Um, our periapsis isn't above the atmosphere, though, so we're going to go ahead and warp until we're out of the atmosphere right now, which will be relatively soon-ish. Fastest we can go in Atmo is 4x, so it is what it is. Our electric charge is currently maxed, thanks to our solar panels. Okay, we are just about out of atmosphere. Another 1,500 meters. Right about now. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and warp up a little bit faster until we're about a minute away from apoapsis. So right about now. Reorient to be on the horizon velocity up. And then at about 50 seconds, we'll try a burn. Actually, 50 seconds is way too far out. We only need a, a difference of 30, 30 kilometers here. So we're going to just go ahead and wait till we're closer to 10. So let's warp up a little bit here. 15 seconds, so start the burn right about now. Okay, there we go. Nice eccentricity, our inclination is a little bit awkward, like I, like I said, 0.6 degrees. Okay, what do we have here? Looks like we have our rescuer here, we have Genefin's pod here, we have Frandis' craft here. And Supont's pod is way out there on a crazy inclination. 
if we're going to need to rescue this pod in a different, or if we're going to need to rescue a pod in a different launch, it should be this one. Okay, first things first, Genefin's pod. Let's set this as our target. Ugh, sorry about that. Suddenly got a bit of a coughing fit. Okay, so let's burn way over here at our descending node. Let's see, which direction do we actually need to go here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm wanting to lock that on, but now modify this. Okay. Let's see here. This is the direction we need to go, but we just need a very, very minor burn here. Right about like that. So match the, in the inclination. And we are actually going to use the maneuver planner in MechJeb. We're not going to plan the maneuvers with it. We are instead just going to execute the maneuver with MechJeb. Okay. There we go. It's just a very, very minor burn. We do have a, a fair amount of Delta V here. This should be plenty. Okay, so we are going to use a Homan rendezvous technique. So we're going to need to raise our apoapsis slightly up above theirs. We'll need to take a closer look at their orbit, though, once we've matched planes here. Okay. Maneuver will be executing momentarily. Right about now-ish. There we go. You go, Mechjeb. This is what Mechjeb is good at. And this is really why I use Mechjeb. That is smart ASS. Okay, so we have matched nodes. So let's go ahead and raise our apoapsis a little bit. Although, we'll raise up our periapsis since we're already past our periapsis. We're basically circularized, so they're pretty much the same thing, although our apoapsis is a bit higher. We'll go ahead and add a bit of a prograde maneuver here. Raise up to be about 120. That'll be fine. And let's go ahead and execute that node. Excellent. And then we'll warp right around to there and execute that. Any second now, Mechjeb. There you go with the warp. <laughs> Good job. Mechjeb just makes this maneuver execution a lot quicker and more accurate, so... I like to use it that way. I... I even often use the maneuver planner to plan the actual maneuvers. It's just... It's, it's a matter of knowing what you need to do. Like, I, I kind of view it as cruise control, sort of, in that once you've proven that you know what you need to do manually, then you're completely fine to use MechJeb. So we'll just do this rendezvous manually, and then later ones I may use MechJeb. Okay, so... Our apoapsis is now way up here. We're going to want to go ahead and circularize, so we're going to want to raise our periapsis up to the same 120 kilometers. That was too much. Come on. Oop, no, 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 no. Nope, too much. <laughs> okay, that's pretty close there. Uh, let's just... Come on. Okay, what's our... What's our apoapsis here? That is close enough. We're within 500 meters. So we'll execute this node. Another 36 meters per second. Excellent. Okay. And then we will go ahead and warp to this maneuver. Okay. 
Come on, Mechjeb. There you go. Good job, Mechjeb. Okay, so we're just going to circularize here. And then we'll take a look at this guy's orbit. Okay. So, it looks like he's in not quite a perfectly circular orbit. He's a little bit closer up here at his apoapsis. Or, or rather, at his periapsis. Wait. This is our periapsis. This is his apoapsis. There we go. Okay, so we are now circularized. And now we need to make a maneuver right around here-ish. We won't actually be doing it here, technically. But we're going to raise our... Or rather, lower our periapsis back down to be about where he's at. But... If you can see, the target points at closest approach intersect one here, intersect one here, separation of about a thousand kilometers. So that's not what we're going for. We want to move these until they're a lot closer together. Now his orbit isn't perfectly circular, which is going to make this a little bit awkward, to be sure. So let's, um, let's orbit around here until we're a little bit closer maybe, or we could simply burn over here and try it over on this side. A retrograde burn until our periapsis is basically the same as his. There we go. Now then, where is our target points? Yeah, we're, we have a very lengthy separation and we are not catching up very much. So we need to just warp around an orbit or two. We can't warp faster than 50x, which is a bit unfortunate. Come on. They, they're they traveling faster than we are in this circle, so they're going to be catching up with us, rather than the other way around. We're kind of falling behind them. But we are going for Genefin's pod. Once we get around here, towards our apoapsis, I'll try again, see how, how close we are at this juncture. Okay. Let's just add a quick retrograde burn in here. Whoa now. Whoa now. That's interesting. <laughs> but I thought I saw... Let's see, is this intersect 2? Yes, that's intersect 2, and that's target position at intersect 2. So we're still significantly far away here. Let's see here. Yeah. Okay, well, I think I'm going to... that. This could be a slightly lengthy process of trying to figure out where exactly we need to be here. It's a lot more efficient if you, you know, figure this out beforehand and launch at the correct time. But didn't do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here and during the break I'm going to warp around until we find a decent intersect. See you all then.